tanks are doing mythic plus are they doing high keys or low keys should you play with a prot warrior or a prot paladin well in today's video we're gonna look at all of the tanks and how they perform in mythic plus in relation to each other and the type of keys that they're clearing so without out of the way without out of the way the expression is there. You heard it right, but then you listened again and it sounded stupid. But we're gonna go and talk about Blood Death Knight, okay? And probably contrary to what a lot of people will uh, want to see in this tier list, Blood Decay is a solid B tier. That is not because it's necessarily a bad tank, it's a pretty good tank. It's very hard to rank all of these tanks in a relevant tier list and actually not make people mad, so I will explain my reasoning. The difference between each tier is roughly around one key level completed by the best of the tanks because otherwise they would probably most of them be in S tier I think and actually I think we even have all of these tanks ranked in keys 7 and higher by Warcraft Logs aka Archon.gg and I think almost all of them are in S tier you can see it right now but if we just do that then people are like but this is way worse than the other one so that's why we kind of have to break them down and we're going to be breaking down based off of their slight differences in key pushing because they're all really good and blood decay is around b tier the problem with blood decay is that it's probably going to remain in b tier while other tanks might actually climb as the season progresses because blood decay still has the same issue of being one-shotted which is a very unreliable way to have a tank since you actually mitigate the damage after you take it and if the damage never kills you then blood decay is the best tank in the world since it won't kill any tank and if the tank doesn't need any healer which is a blood decay then it makes you the best tank so we cannot have that so we have to have damage that at one point kills the blood decay before any other tank and that's why blood decay will never really reach higher rankings that doesn't really mean that it's a bad tank it's actually a fairly good tank has probably some of the highest dps that tanks usually put out in dungeons and it has a lot of cool things that dk like in dungeons a lot of self-sustain for one thing a lot of immunities to magic stuns pushbacks and all of that stuff particularly for dungeons like arakara g just what would i give to be a blood decay in arakara but that's where it is play a blood decay it's fine even if it's b tier you will enjoy it playing a tank is about playing it smart and doing it the smart way is the best way, which is why when it comes to backend web developing, there's no smarter way than the boot.dev way, the sponsor of today's video. Whether it is learning routes or how to program, the smartest way to do it is by typing and writing code, finishing projects and leveling up your coding skills. Boot.dev believes that is the best way to learn and they make it a real adventure. For real, if you want to learn programming languages like Python and Go, Boot.dev makes it really interesting because we know how it is to get bored when studying. We've been there in high school and so on. And I bet you anything you would have aced your exams if part of the learning process was about finishing quests and gaining experience points. Yeah, you heard me. Boot.dev incorporates a very interactive system of learning backend web development by appealing to our gamer hearts. Getting achievements for completed lessons is a different feeling altogether. Leveling up and climbing the leaderboards gives you a real sense of progress. And that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, we are talking about a career here. And I shouldn't tell you what the IT market is like. But I will tell you that the median salary for backend web developers in the United States was over $100,000 in 2023, according to Stack Overflow. But don't take my word for it. You can start right now, and if you don't think it's for you, put that dev assures up 30 day money back guarantee. That's how confident they are in their courses. Check the description for our link down below and use our code Marcellian Online for 25% off of your first month or first year, depending on what subscription plan you end up choosing for yourself. Thank you, Buddha Dev, for sponsoring our video. Moving to Brewmaster is also around bitter actually brewmaster is kind of significantly worse than blood decay overall overall in terms of the players that are pushing brewmaster are slightly worse than than blood decay but they're all kind of pushing the same key levels which is around 11s and 12s the top 10 by the way this is the top 10 this is not your average tank that you invite into your group this is the best of the best people like yoda like dude this guy holy shit he puts his hand on a tank and just takes it into a plus 13 even a tank that 
pretty much everybody else puts it into F tier. Like, what is going on? I digress. Brewmaster is still really good. It's, of course, being pulled a little bit by some of the top brewmasters in the world, like Equinox and stuff like that. But it's still going to lag behind every other tank. It's kind of been like that since beta, unfortunately, which actually proves me wrong because I actually expected Brewmaster to be a solid S tier, but the tuning just isn't favoring it almost at all. I feel like Monk is probably the next on the chopping block when it comes to hero talents changes slash reworks because it is one with the most boring ones available in the game currently, and they don't feel like they do much to push the spec to a whole new level, although there are some pretty good defensive hero talents as well. With that out of the way, monks are decent. It's Moonwalker is actually picking up a lot of steam, so that matters because if you really want a monk to, you know, get your group to push higher for that monk utility, you're probably going to look at getting Windwalker, although there are brewmasters that are pushing keys higher than Windwalker, so maybe, 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 I don't know anything. But either way, score-based, key level-based, that's where brewmaster kind of is, which is a story that we cannot say about Bear, which has officially, as of recording this video, become the number one tank. It's probably gonna stay for like a week or so. And number one tank by not a lot, right? It's actually edging a little bit over Prot Warrior. Shit, am I spoiling it? Just a tad, but not by very much. It is one of the best tanks in the game. Currently, it is clearing the highest keys. Currently, I think as of recording this video, the top bear in the world did the first 14, which is like two days or day before you get to see it, something like that, which is very impressive. Definitely worthy of being number one, just from a sheer fact that it's just doing a little bit better than everybody else. But Bear has been pretty solid since beta. It's actually really nice to see Bear on top. Again, I know people are, are thinking back of the of the God comp, but that was like such an outlier that's likely never going to happen again. Right now, it feels like Bear kind of deserves its spot because it's working hard. It doesn't have like a degenerate tier set to push it and a degenerate supporter to push it. It is just pure, pure solid. Now, when it comes to... <laughs> Paladin, the before mentioned worst tank in the game, I want to put it into C tier, but it's not actually. I was surprised to see that Prop Paladin is also clearing keys at the same level of Brewmaster and Blood Decay, essentially in the 11s and 12s, some 13s as well done in time. It depends on where you look for your information. Databases are not complete consistent across the board. For instance, we have, once again, Warcraft logs or Archon.gg. I don't know what to call them, man, because all of the data that's aggregated into particular tables and rankings is on Archon.gg. They have ranked all of the tanks based on popularity, and there's a list, like you can see the ranking here, and you can see that pretty much all of them have cleared a plus 13. That means that essentially you could really put them all into S here, which Archon.gg definitely has, but that's just a little bit boring because they're not equal, right? I cannot honestly put them all equal. And we could probably put Prop Paladin slightly lower than Brewmaster and Blood Decay, but since they're doing similar keys and if you put it into C tier, it just means that it's terrible. I just couldn't do it. That's why it's currently into B tier. Keep in mind, it's still doing plus 12s, plus 13s at the moment, probably by like one or two people in the whole world, but that's probably going to be more people coming the next week. And if you really think about it, we've said this before, for just because uh, a spec is underperforming doesn't mean it's necessarily the worst, right? Just because Prop Paladin is at the bottom of the tier doesn't mean it's a useless tank. Because let's say if the best bears and the best warriors and the best Vengeance Demon Hunters or whatever would play Prop Paladin right now, all of the Prop Paladins would probably do a key higher than the ones that you currently see right now. That's just the majority of the best players in the world gravitate towards the best specs and the other ones get significantly skewed data in terms of performance. Prot Warrior. All right. So formally, it, I think statistically up until this week, it was the best tank in Mythic Plus. Now it's still just, just a little bit behind, just a little bit slower than Bear. And that's probably because we're doing this research fairly soon after the reset. So it's likely that not a lot of Prot Warriors have had time to clear the keys. But then again, you could say the same thing about any spec, right? If Bears had time to clear a plus 14, why didn't Warriors have time to clear a plus 13? 14, huh? Either way, I don't know which one of these two is going to be the absolute king in, you know, I would say middle of the season, because right now people still probably don't have their perfect gear yet. They might have like super high level, but I don't think everybody has perfected their stats, full gems on everything, max avoidance and leech and stuff like that. Until that point, things can still like go a little bit up and down. But as it stands right now, Pro is just very, very, very solid. It's super tanky. It has a lot of damage. I don't think it has, actually, no. 
uh, scratch that. Just looking at some of the top keys, we might have some uh, some logs showing on the screen. They're not fully, you know, fleshed out, but just to point it out, Bear is probably the tank with some of the most damage. And there's quite a bit of difference between Bear and Warrior. But either way, Warrior is just a unit, dude, with the amount of defensive spell reflex that you can just negate a lot of mechanics that other tanks super struggle through. It is crazy. And last but not least, we do have to take Vengeance and actually put it into A tier. Vengeance is also similar to Prop Paladin. It's actually very close to Prop Warrior and Bear, but it's significantly behind and still ahead of Blood Decay and Brewmash that it kind of is in its own tier. For me, it was surprising because hearing some of the top tanks talk about Vengeance, they kind of categorize it the way I kind of felt it, as in being a little bit squishy, yet it's still doing super high keys. So is it squishy or is it not squishy? It's likely doing high keys because of the amount of utility that it has. And even if it's it feels squishy. It's not that squishy, right? Because you could say the same thing about Prop Alden and Prop Alden are still crushing it when it comes to doing the high keys. And some of the top Vengeance are actually clearing a lot of 13s, just not quite as much as Pro Warrior and Bear. They're not quite equal. This is how essentially it looks if you take a more critical approach to the data. But this is, of course, based off of the top tanks of each individual spec. Once again, for the majority of the players, all tanks are probably good. I would probably not recommend people play Prot Paladin because even though it can technically keep up with the rest of the tanks, you are so punished for messing up. It's such an unreliable tank if you're not playing it perfectly. If you're not people like Yoda, you're gonna have a hard time making Prop Alden work in high keys. But with that out of the way, it's looking good. And listen, this is not everything, right? There's also ranged DPS that you can check. We have a tier list on that uh, are actually pushing keys as well, uh, believe it or not. With these actual tanks, because melee doesn't really exist in Mythic Plus anymore, it's all range, baby. Color me surprised. Check our video. 